Good morning. A lot of new people this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of us this morning. For wherever you are, if you're new and want to share where you're from, feel free to put that into the chat, into the Zoom world. Uh, one of the great things about this is building relationships across the country that we have in, in our Facebook world as well. Thank you so much for being on here. My name is Brock Zevian. I do this every Monday through Friday from 8.15 in the morning to about 8.35-ish. Uh, then we get a little bit of our team meeting. I'm a life coach, business coach, real estate agent. And my most important thing that I was blessed with this past weekend is a dad. So for those that were able to uh, see me in good old Facebook world, uh, my daughter, Brielle, she turned 10 on Friday. And then my son, Bryce, he turned four on Sunday. So we had an action-packed weekend with the kids and just being a part of them. So it was pretty cool to be able to have that um, and to be able to celebrate that. So, um, let's dive into today, <clears throat> excuse me. And I had the topic to not, I had the topic. I still have the topic today is basically what you got going on in your environment. And we're going to talk about that later this morning. I do my role plays with good old mornings with Mike. Mike Castro is going to be joining us here very shortly. But the thing that I was listening to, and I was listening to Grant Cardone this weekend, some days on, depending if I have my kids, on Sundays, I like to start my workouts on Sunday. It gets me ahead of the week. I feel a little bit more motivated. And I was listening to his speech about environment. In this week, especially here in Charlotte, North Carolina, with the school transitions starting, this is our last summer uh, week, but your environment, I want you to think right now, okay, if you're driving, please don't close your eyes, but I want you to think about what your environment is going into today, okay? Are you going into an office? Are you going to have conversations with people that put you in a positive environment? Do you got some positive synergy on what you got going on the rest of the day today? Are you going to be talking to your top agents? Are you going to be reading positive stuff? Are you going to be listening to motivational stuff? A lot of you are already starting your day with, with us this morning, so that's a good start. I start my morning at 435 and I'm immediately putting positive energy, positive reading, positive prayers, mindset, motivation into my life first thing in the morning because I get to control my environment. I have a rule of thumb for those that I coach. I control my environment as much as I possibly can until basically the floodgates open, meaning starting at 9.15 in the morning, the floodgates will be open. I will have challenges, problems, ordeals, situations. It's just part of life. But from when I wake up in the morning till 9.15, I pretty much can control. So I control my environment. If not, our environment will control us. Okay. This doodad right here, controls majority of society. Had a conversation with some young high school kids over the weekend and they were telling me, and I was asking about their morning and, and their and after practice, well, Brock, you don't understand my YouTube and my notifications and my Snapchat and all this stuff comes into play. And I said, because we were talking about when they work out. Well, it just depends, blah, blah, blah. So I say to you, I pretty much know, and I'm, I'm at fault for this because it's attached to my alarm clock, but I've been working on it, that this cell phone probably, I would say 95% of us pick it up first thing in the morning. And we probably go to maybe some social media site, or we go to our emails, or we start letting the day control us. Now, I hope we're, we, we, uh, the goal is to be able to control that environment first thing in the morning, but most of us, our environment is controlled. And then we know for sure throughout the day, our notifications are on or whatever it might be. That environment that you put yourself in will dictate the rest of your day into some capacity. They talk a lot about the 1099 versus the W-2 environment, okay? I'm going to switch gears on you real quick. The 1099 environment, would you say, has more or less distractions than a W-2 environment? Would you say... The W-2 environment is a little bit more controlled. Would we say that? A W-2 environment, when I was a school teacher, I had to be at work at a certain time period. 
I had to be at a, they told me when I can have lunch. Okay. They told me when I can leave to go to work. They told me exactly when my vacations are. They told me I'd have two weeks off for Christmas. I'd have some summertime, like everything in that environment for W2 was controlled. When we get to a 1099, give me a thumbs up or you agree with me that a 1099 has a lot more flexibility. A 1099 has a lot more flexibility and it puts us in a position where my discipline has really, really been, it's going to be, it, it's going to be tested. My, my self-discipline is going to be tested. At 4.35 in the morning, I promise you, I promise you, there is nobody cheering me on to wake me up. I'm the only one that has flexibility whether or not to hit that button and hit snooze or get my tail out of bed. There's, there's nobody like, come on, Brock, you can do it. Come on, let's go, let's go, get up. No, th th there is, that doesn't happen. Okay, that environment when nobody is around is tested. And so I'm going to challenge you today and this week. When nobody is in your environment, what are you doing? The integrity of when you're by yourself is tested at that moment because it's very easy. I'm on Facebook right now. I'm on Zoom and people are watching and I've been doing this for quite some time and everybody's like, wow, Brock, you're a really good person. You're really nice. You do this. Okay. I'm going through a separation. Do you think when I'm by myself, there's this little guy with wearing horns over here and he's got a fork in his hand. Do you think he's whispering things into my ear when nobody's around? Do you think that environment when I'm not around and I'm not in a good position, I could be persuaded to go in a different direction. So I'm going to challenge you today when you're in an environment and in you're in a good opportunity when everything is blissful and things are great. That environment is so conducive to success. That environment, when there's money in your pocket, we feel good. It creates energy. But I get to control my environment. I get to control what I do, when I do it, at a certain time period, when I'm by myself or when I'm in front of people. I can only hope and pray. That when people see me, that this guy's, boy, he really shows up, man. I don't, I don't know what he does. I don't know what he eats in the morning. I don't know what he's got going on. But whether he's by himself, whether he's with his family, whether he's with his significant other, whether he's at work, this guy shows up. That environment is inside my head. Because I can't be around synergy all the time. They talk about it many times. Your motivation can only last so long. And then discipline takes over. So today, think about your environment. Are you driving around by yourself? Are you in an office by yourself? Are you at home by yourself? Do you talk to people? Do you reach out to people? Mike Castor and I just had a phenomenal conversation. We're going to talk about the, the dead week. Okay. I talked to many people over this weekend who were telling me that their, their homes that they have listed, nothing. Crickets. Okay. And then what you do, and I had several conversations. Well, I didn't have any listings either. No, no. I mean, I had no appointments. Nothing took place, blah, 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 blah. Okay. It's Monday morning, negative talent sets. Oh, you didn't have anything either. Oh my gosh. You, you, man, neither did I. Oh, my client's going to call me today and I have nothing to tell them. I don't know what I'm going to, I'm not going to answer. I'm just going to, I am just going to, I'm going to go to what I call, I'm going to go hide. Okay, we're going to talk about that here very shortly, what not to do, because we're going to be tested right now. Okay, I said it to the agents on the team. I said, I just need you guys to do me a favor. These next two weeks are not going to be fun. Your environment, the next two weeks will dictate what your third quarter, I know your third quarter is going to be. I, had, I did a Facebook Live a couple of weeks ago on what August means. August is a transition month. People are going back to school, final weeks of vacation. People are not fully involved in their work until September comes. They're like, oh, gosh, I better go do some work now. I just looked at my bank account. Then that happens for about three or four months. And then I hear, Brock, you won't believe it. I'm going to go back to uh, teaching. I'm going to go back to my W-2 job. Don't do that. Before you do that, 
I want you to pick up a phone. I want you to either call me, text me. A couple of people reach out to me today. They're moving, going in different states. They have to move back because of situations that are taking place. And I'll be, damn, you better not have a negative image, right? Negative attitude. You better get yourself in an environment that's going to push you forward. Because when you have challenging times, your environment will absorb it and be like, ah. Now, I'm going to conclude on this. I'm sweating here because I get so excited about this and I get so passionate about environment because it drives me crazy when people tell me, Brock, you don't understand. I got this going on, this going on, this going on, this going on. And I'm not here to try to one up anybody. I'm just trying to tell you that part of my life, my personal life is extremely challenging, extremely challenging. I deal with more attorneys than probably people, I I wish people to. But when you're exposed and you're out there and you're going through situations, things take place. It's like, Brock, what are you saying? It's just part of life. If you talk to the most successful people in this world, in this country, they have different things that are happening. Exposure creates that, but you can't run from it. You have the faith and you have the energy to move forward to it. If you're going to run, might as well run towards it. So guys, I'm going to bring on Mike. I asked Mike to be a little vulnerable. Mike's a very successful agent. Mike's been doing this business for a long period of time. And he shared with me some things today. And and him and I were having a conversation and he called it a dead week. And then we started talking about environment. We started talking about different things that are taking place. And some of you on here will be vulnerable. And some of you, I get it. You don't have to be vulnerable. But if you're having a dead week, If you're having a challenging time period, meaning your business is just not where you want it to be, I don't care how successful you are. I have my goals and I'm not having a week that I want to have a week, okay? I want to do seven to 10 listings a month. I'm not at seven to 10 listings a month, so I'm having a good month? No, okay? Lack of inventory. I can come up with excuses all the time, but Brock's not putting in the effort that he needs to, so I got to zone in. So I'm having a little bit of a dead week myself. And so for, if you're having a dead week, if you're having a challenge, put yourself out there, be a little vulnerable, be like, Hey, that's me too. I got my hand up. I'm, I'm, I want to listen in. Okay. So Mr. Caster, I love our new mornings with Mike, big Mike. Good morning, sir. How are you? Where is he at? He hasn't even hit his microphone. Big Mike, I'm going to give you a couple seconds, and I don't know what's going on in your environment. There you go. <laughs> well, well, this happened. I was in the car, and I think it switched over from Wi-Fi or something, because all of a sudden it went dead. But now you're back, so you can hear me, right? I I can, I can. Okay. I'm just going to switch you off. If you're not going to video, I'm going to put you outside of it, because if not, I just see a black well, screen. I'm, I'm driving, so I hate to be on video while I'm driving. But um, all this to say is, uh, yeah. Tell Brock is like um, it's a good time for me to decide to uh, go out of town for a few days. Yeah, nothing happened at all. And uh, but the key thing is, so how do you handle? That's what we're talking about. What do you put your response to it? And what are we going to do? Because um, the key thing is, we can't change the amount of showings, the amount of this or that. But it's just funny because on his listings, I was telling him, man, it's like almost a. Uh, identical to what the response I was having. So what we need to be able to do is what we can control. And 100% in agreement is that you can't just sit back and say, Hey, uh, I'm not going to talk to the person. What am I going to say? I really got nothing to say. Um, And this is where I think a real kind of calm and even demeanor really is an asset and comes into play because it's a matter of just reassuring your people. Hey, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Once again, you know, uh, I had one person say, yeah, I just thought my house was going to sell in a week. And I said, no, remember, we had this conversation. This is a different market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and I'm like, you know, you're going to go down that road anyway. So to me, and I'm just really echoing what Brock said, is that you've got to get out in front of it because if it goes on long without them, after a while, they're like, well, this person isn't doing anything. I don't hear from them. Like Brock said, most expires. Listen to what they said, what you didn't like about your other agent, well, they didn't communicate, um, they weren't doing anything, they didn't do an open house, they didn't do this, and they just felt like they weren't doing anything. So in order to prevent that, you got to take that initial uncomfortable step, make that conversation, say, yeah, 
I got two owners that I got to call and say, yeah, we had absolutely no showings last week. We had nobody show up at both of those open houses. But it's like, again, it's counseling patients, and we just got to stick to it. And that's why real estate agents tend to drink, because you get too high or you get too low, <laughs> and you get stressed out, but you can't do that. And so it was kind of comforting to me when you do hear somebody else say, yeah, I'm kind of going through the same thing right now. So at least the story we can say is, hey, it looks like there's a shift in the market. And if you take a look at um, on Inman today, they had an article um, that Zillow is reporting that the average numbers of showings are down, the average days on market are longer. And it's like, yeah, no kidding. We knew that. But at least you have scientific data now that's showing it's a reflection. It's not just your house, Mr. or Mrs. Zeller. This is happening across the Charlotte area and across the country. So again, let's go back to the playbook. What do we got to do? You know, uh, 17 to 21 days. We're getting, this is my script. Hey, do you want to talk about a price improvement? Let's open up a new buyer audience. Here's the number of buyers that are looking in this price range. If we drop down to here, we'll open up to these more potential buyers. Um, and what would you like to do? So that's how I would yeah. do it. No, I, and I, I'm going to share with you guys two scripts here real quickly before we, before we have to get out of here. Um, <clears throat> um, first and foremost, if you're in a dead zone and you're in a dead week and you're not doing very well or you're challenged or your listings have something going on, you need to talk to other people in your environment that are going to help motivate you, not be like, oh my gosh, you too? talked about that just a couple minutes earlier. Mike and I, we could have, I'm like, Mike, imagine if you and I didn't have a good mindset, we'd be like freaking negative Nelly going into Monday. We'd be like, oh my goodness. I, yeah, mine. Oh, we'd be going crazy. Okay. So the first thing you have to do, my status calls are Tuesdays. Guess what I just did? Status calls are now Mondays. Why? Because I can't wait an extra day because they're going to get themselves in a position where they're going to have a negative mindset because they're left to their own devices. I know when I study personalities, how people are, when people are left to their own devices, they will choose the path of least resistance, which is typically taking the exit down negative town. And next thing you know, I got a problem on my hand on Tuesday when I called, well, my wife and I were talking, my significant other and I were talking and we just blah, blah, blah. OK, I got to hit it first and foremost, and I got to be able to attack it on a Monday because we're in a transition period. OK, no problem. There is no police on my schedule. I can immediately change that from a Tuesday to a Monday. So that's my first thing that I recommend people in your pipeline. If you got buyers and they can't find any property and the interest rates are going on, call them on a Monday. Don't call them on a Tuesday. Get ahead of the game. Set the expectations. I told you I'm from Charlotte. I know this is the last summer of school, a last summer week. Okay. I also know that many uh, uh, counties around the area are going back to school. Do you think that's important? Do you think you should need to know that? Do you think parents, when they're trying to get themselves in a routine, the kids in a routine, trying to get the new sleep schedule, say, hey, honey, why don't we go look at homes and buy a house this week? Like, that's not happening. Okay. So the buyers are decreasing. Okay, it's plain and simple. Next week in Charlotte is the first week of school. So this week they're prepping and planning and placing all their book bags and school clothes and everything else. They're not thinking about buying and selling right now. Okay, so our calls this week are checking in. How you doing? How's school going? I'm so excited. How the kids are going? How they feeling? Blah, blah, blah. It's checking call week. Next week, we already know if you didn't call them this week on checking, you're calling them next week on checking. Don't say, hey, have you thought about buying and selling real estate this week? They're going to be like, what? Are you crazy? Okay, that's not going to happen. Your clients that you got in place right now, you need to call, check in with them. Hey, I want to let you know what I'm hearing. I just had a, a coaching call this morning. Is this a coaching call? Yes. I have coaching calls all the time. I just want to let you know, I'm just talking to a national coach. And he said during a school transition, first the week before and the week after, things are going to slow down. Oh, gosh, Brock. Yeah, you mentioned that last week. And yeah, it was pretty slow. So I understand. See, I'm setting myself up to help me being able to have better conversations because if I don't and I hide, guess what? I haven't heard from him. I don't have any showings and it's just going to go down a negative path. Okay. Those things take place. Paul, thank you so much, man. I'm glad that's what I'm telling you. I appreciate your vulnerability and sharing that. Okay. Paul just said, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Many of us need to hear that right now to be able to put in information.
Okay. I'm not going to use this analogy because it's not a very, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use an analogy that I'm, I, all I can say is this time has a way of ma- making people move because emotion is created during that time period. And it's either going to be a time of pain or a time of pleasure. When people have pain or pleasure, they will make emotional decisions. And our job is to help them pain. Hey, you haven't had showings. We haven't been here. I've been talking to you. I've been doing this, blah, blah, blah. It's time to make a price improvement. You're right. We haven't had anything. Pain sets in. Okay. In this case, pleasure will not allow, pleasure is fine because hopefully we're getting showings and there's an offer in place, but time has a way. So during these check-in calls, I'm just trying to buy myself time. That's what I'm trying to do, but I'm not going to hide. Pain breaks through the fear to move you forward. Greg, absolutely. Okay. These things help you, but running from it does not. Anybody got any questions or anything on that? I know I went a little bit over today, but I I need to have people understand environment works not only for yourself, but creating environment for other people. You got to help yourself out, create an environment to make it conducive for them to, to be able to make decisions or see what they got going on or ease the pain, whatever that might look like. Has anybody got anything for I mean, Facebook world or on Zoom, anything they want to ask or share? Or just think, Brock, you're crazy on a Monday. Well, I'd rather be crazy than controlled in a W-2 environment. That's what I got to say. Yeah. No, and and, uh, guys, this is my 10th year, my 10th year that I've been out of teaching. I taught for 12 years in the school system. My goal every year when my mom says, Brock, are you sure you want to do this? I said, mom, well, every year I get to make that decision to see whether or not I make, make enough money financially to be able to move forward. And I, every August, every August, and this is my 10th one. I'm so excited. I'm just, you don't understand. Like when you have these things inside your head to be able to say, Hey, I made enough money. I'm successful. I don't have to go back in the teaching world. Not because I don't want to teach. It's just, I wanted to, I wanted to have some flexibility. Flexibility also comes with finances. Okay. You're absolutely right, Paul. I 100% agree. Paul said that there's going to be a lot of agents that might not make it through the winter. You're absolutely right. Because we are going into a shift. This market that we are about to see will filter out agents. Okay. My three-year-old could sell a house last summer. Okay. That's, that's, I could just put a post on Facebook and he could sell a house. All right. Those things could take place because the market was so easy to sell houses. It's going to be challenging now. Chris, who's on here, <clears throat> I know Chris in the mortgage world. The mortgage world is a different, he, he, he's going it, to, it's different. I have more lenders blowing me up right now because the market is softening. The refinances aren't there. So there's a lot of challenges that they have. I love how Chris shows up every day. He shows up every single day in some capacity. Follow him on Facebook. He's out there. Greg, doing Facebook posts every single day about videos, about talking about the market. Guys, consistently good is better than occasionally great. And you need to start today if you want to make it in this market in the fourth quarter. All right. It's 839. I got to get ready to drop off Brielle because I'm still in my summer schedule and I got to get her out there. So for those of you in Facebook world, let me know if you liked what we had, we talked about today. Give me a heart. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some comments out there. Anything you like to see or anything else that you want us to add to it in Facebook world. Thank you so much for being on here. Remember in zoom world, you always can come back and you're you got a live voice in the zoom world. Thank you so much, everybody in Facebook. Look at all that. I get, I get excited guys. When you're coaching, you, you still got to be able to, you got to have engagement in it. And sometimes you don't have that in a classroom setting. So for those of you, thank you so much for all the likes. Uh, join us Facebook at 815 tomorrow. We'll be back here again. Uh, Zoom world, I'm going to keep us rocking and rolling. So let me just see you later. Facebook.